So let us continue with the, the transient solution for a Markov process. As an example, we uh, took uh, the case of uh, the weather problem, the two state weather problem, the sunny state and the rainy state with the transition probabilities of sunny days becoming rainy days next day and the rainy days becoming the sunny the next day. So with that we arrived at a solution after n days or after n steps, the probability that the day will be sunny denoted here by S n that will be uh, given by this transient expressions where P 1 and P 2 where the probabilities of sunny turning sunny and rainy turning rainy respectively including uh, from the initial state S naught and then of course, uh, a generated a term which will eventually be uh, responsible for the steady state. Now, first let us see what is going to be the value of the stationary or steady state. For that we should take the limit of n tending to infinity. We obtain the then the steady state from the knowledge that since p 1 plus p 2 lies between 0 and 2 because the p 1 and p 2 individually are independent probabilities lying between 0 and 1. So, their lowest value of the sum will be 0, highest will be 2 which means p 1 plus p 2 minus 1 should be more than minus 1 and less than plus 1. So, modulus of that should always be less than 1. Hence, the term p 1 plus p 2 minus 1 to the power n will tend to 0 as n tends to infinity because it is a number which is less than 1 its power will tend to 0. So, that gives us a steady state probability for a sunny day eventually starting from the fact that it was sunny definitely on the first day. So, it will be 1 minus p 2 by 2 minus p 1 plus p 2 it, because this term also will go to 0 you will be left with this term. The correspondingly the probability for asymptotically the day to be a rainy day will be 1 minus that. So, it will be 1 minus p 1 by 2 minus p 1 plus p 2 it is just subtract and you can get it. So, it gives us uh, the relative ratio relative strength of a day being sunny or rainy asymptotically as 1 minus p 2 by 1 minus q 1 or using the complementary values it is either q 2 by q 1. So, which is the ratio of the probability of turning to a sunny day from a rainy day divided by the probability of turning to a rainy day from a sunny day. So, we can show it as a transition diagram. So, if this now are representation of states the rainy state and the sunny state then the final ratio of between the probabilities of sunny and rainy are just the ratio of the downward and the upward transition probabilities. So, that is about the steady state. However, the approach to steady state is also equally interesting and now the problem degenerates into two cases. Supposing p 1 plus p 2 is less than 1 <coughs> which is possible they are independent probabilities this can be let us say 0 0.1 and this can be 0 0.2 it is less than 1. Then p 1 plus p 2 minus 1 will be less than 0 because it is a it will be negative and hence p 1 plus p 2 minus 1 to the power n will oscillate from negative to positive values as n moves from odd to even. So, for n is odd negative to the power n will be negative when n is even that will be positive. As a result approach to steady state will be oscillatory. So, we should see in this picture it, uh, a diagrammatic representation that if you start with the sunny state it will keep the probability will keep uh, oscillating the amplitude of oscillation will come down successively as n increases and eventually the steady state value that we predicted will be attained. So, this is the case when 
P 1 plus P 2 is less than 1. If P 1 plus P 2 is more than 1, then, then we have yeah, the case of more than 1, then the decay becomes monotonic, not oscillatory decay or approach to steady state. will be monotonic. That is because when P 1 plus P 2 is more than 1, this term is positive, it will successively decrease, but all the time remain successively less every time and increases. So, that would look something like this. So, for the case P 1 plus P 2 greater than 1, we are going to have uh, diagrammatically saying the transition transients would look something it will reach a steady state, but it will follow a smooth um, monotonic decay. So, this is the probability S S n as n increases. So, this is n. So, it is, it is basically an example to show how one can obtain transient solutions. If you have for example, three state problem, then it is a, like solving three simultaneous equations, you can again in principle get it, but it becomes more and more difficult as the number of states uh, increases and one has to do it numerically by operating with the, uh, trans, the transition matrix at successive states. But in principle, we have now understood how one can both obtain a transient solution as well as a steady state solution from, uh, from the uh, knowledge of transition matrix. So, this, this is the strength of basically the Markovian hypothesis. Most of the examples that we took, they seem to be all Markovian, at least we have framed it so. In order to give you a kind of a feeling for what could be a non-Markovian process, which are quite plenty in fact in nature, to give you a one, one of the practical or nearly realistic problems, we take a case of some particle agglomeration modeling. So, this is a, as an example of example for non-Markovian processes. We take a oversimplified agglomeration model. Let us say it is oversimplified basically just to illustrate the point. So, an agglomeration model. Let us remind ourselves this is not a rigorous model, it is just a highly uh, simplified uh, skeletal, skipping the skeletal principles just to illustrate the point. So, an oversimplified. So, in this model, let us imagine that there is a large reservoir, a box. in which there are some monomer particles. Some molecules suspended, their number is very large and they do not get depleted. If one is something happens, we replenish them externally. So, we keep that. Let us say that in this system, in this uh, reservoir, there is also one seed particle of interest. So, we let us say we indicate it with another color, the seed particle is let us say red. Now, we process uh, execute the 
the process of agglomeration in the following way. So, every in every step we allow the monomers to agglomerate and form dimers. In the next step, we stop that process and allow those dimers to agglomerate with the seed particle. So, this is a seed particle, these are monomers. So, what do we do? In the first step, we allow same system, we allow these monomers will be there very large number and of course, this seed particle will be there. So, in the first step, at the end of step 1, with the some rule, with some probability, we allow that one dimer particle will be formed by a small collection of these two monomers. It is much smaller than this seed particle. So, we allow the formation of a dimer with some probability p and with the probability 1 minus p there will be no dimer formed. So, there are there are two options. So, we talk, we, as we mentioned we generate a random number. If the probability p is uh, pre assigned let us say 0.4, then if the random number shows a number less than 0.4, we allow a dimer formation. If it allows a number, if it shows a number more than 0.4, we disallow the formation. This is step 1. In the step 2, we allow these dimers only to agglomerate with the seed. We assume that the monomers do not somehow, this is an artificial assumption, but assume that over the seed particle only the dimers if existing that will agglomerate with this and form a larger cluster. If this volume of the seed particle is V naught, then here the volume will be V naught plus 2 small V naught, where small V naught is the volume of a monomer. So, dimer will have a volume of 2 V naught, that is the idea. And so on. In the third step, now we again allow only the monomer agglomeration and allow it to form a dimer. So, dimer concentration may increase if it has not been consumed already. But every simulation in steps, all the odd steps will correspond to the formation of a dimer through monomer monomer interaction, and at every even step these dimers let us say will interact with the seed particle to make it grow. And our interest is to construct a kind of Markovian equation for the growth of the seed particle. We are only focusing on the seed particle. So, in the seed state space, if you look at the seed state space, its initial volume let us say is V naught, it can only increase by 2 V naught because the dimer only is attaching or its volume at any time can be 4 V naught or 6 V naught. So, we are executing a kind of stochastic motion along the seed volume space. So, this is a seed volume, this is my random walking and it is increasing discreetly v naught is some number let us say and it will increase by 2 units. So, it has now all the character of a stochastic process and we are interested in finding out simulating how, how the volume continues to increase because there is no decrease. We are not allowing for its re evaporation. Main thing is to see whether like this when you proceed after some stage if it has a volume v naught plus some let us say n v naught, what is the probability of transition to another volume of v naught plus n plus 2 v naught, because it changes by 2 units every simulation. 
and here n is let us say always even numbers because that is the way we have the rules suggest that our particles are uh, the seed particles grow in only even steps. So, this transition probability p n to n plus 1 from n uh, here n is of course, the number of steps, but we are talking of basically v n plus 1 probability that the volume v n plus 2 to v uh, from the previous step. So, what is the transition probability? Is it a function only of the state or does it depend on the path? So, this is the uh, key thing that will decide whether it is a Markovian or a non-Markovian process. To understand it better, let us draw the whole process of whatever I described in the following fashion. So, I will now consider the states uh, steps along these vertical lines. So, let us say in the step 1, where I get monomer plus per monomer is a dimer. So, as soon as the process is over at the end of the step 1, I have a dimer formation with the probability p. So, dimer with probability p or I may have no dimer growth or non, non growth. non formation with the probability 1 minus p. We may need more length, so we will write like this. So, that brings us to step 2. So, what does this say? In step 1, if a dimer is formed, so this becomes then a path 1. If dimer is not formed, many realizations will actually follow path 2, all coming from the same simulation of probability p and 1 minus p. So, if path 1 is followed just before step 2, you will have a dimer formed. If path 2 is followed, there will be no dimer. So, when we now seek of a transition probability and of course, here the volume was V naught because our cluster or seed was yet to grow. So, if it had followed, if the whole process was coming from path 1, it will again follow two branches here because every step has probabilities, let us say. And in the upper one is a probability of seed growth and let us say that in order for the seed to grow, there must be at least one dimer. So, if the dimer is there, the transition probability will be finite. So, P of V 2 from V naught, it will exist, it will not be 0 in this path because it is a path where a dimer is formed and hence definitely there is a probability of it growing. Transition probability exists. On the other hand, if this path is chosen with the probability 1 minus of that, then this is a non, non growth for the seed in any case. So, at the end of this path, when you are readying yourself for the next step, say step 3, you would have seen that the transition probability for the seed to grow depended on the path, because it was pre, it was a prerequisite to have a monomer uh, for to have a dimer for the seed to grow because that is the rule we have set. Although rule remains the same, the fundamental rule remains the same, monomers, monomers interact in first step and then we allow 
the seed to interact with the dimer. But if the dimers are not formed, then, then both the paths will lead to non-growth only. Hence, this transition probability here will be non-zero here, whereas if, if the path, second path is followed for the seed formation, the transition probability P, because there is no dimer formed, will be zero. And of course, this is a non-growth anyway, always with some probability. Hence, we will find that the transition probability, the P of V2, V0 depends on path. It is non-zero only if path 1 is followed, but for all the realizations where path 2 are followed, the transition probability has to be set to 0. So, this is just an illustration of an example where problem, physical problems could be non-Markovian. Although this is a very idealized problem, this is indeed true in many problems uh, in, in formulating the so called population balance models for aggregation and coagulation and they cannot be, uh, uh, it, they have to be done by uh, more compli complex non-Markovian methods. What people normally do is to assume a mean field kind of a probability instead of saying, um, um, assigning exactly uh, dependent on the dimer formation number one produces an average probability for the dimer formation averaging over the 0, 1 probabilities and then assigns it for the step. So, that every step there is a certain probability transition probability regardless of the path that is chosen. So, that is of course, a sim more simplified Markovianization of a non actually a non Markovian model. There are many examples. So, I just um, uh, I gave this specific uh, case. Uh, for example, if uh, the transition probabilities depend on time, that could also be a non Markovian process. If transition probabilities are actually dependent on another hidden variable, whereas you are interested in only formulating over, let us say, a state space of uh, one per another uh, variable, then also the system will have an apparent non Markovian nature, which can which can be removed only by including the degree of freedom on which the system was hidden already. So, these are uh, uh, some of the interesting aspects that uh, needs to be known before we address a transition process uh, or before we address what approach to follow to describe that stochastic process. I wish to uh, also at this stage to uh, give you an advance information on how do we formulate a stochastic process in the continuous time variable. Continuous, I call it as time, but it can be step, continuous time Markov process. Of course, time is always continuous. So, what we mean by that is we now convert step to time. So, the Chapman and Skog, uh, Chapman Kolmogorov equation, specifically we derive the Chapman Kolmogorov. equation takes a, a kind of a parallel form to the transition probability uh, relationship for a two step uh, process that we formulated in terms of sums basically for discrete uh, state processes. So, for continuous state and continuous time, let us say that a system It suffered motion, 
transition or motion from a position x 1 at time t 1 x 1 at time t 1 which is denoted often by a pair x 1 t 1 to a position x 2 at time t 2 and then to x 3 at time t 3. Here time ordered ordering is done. So, it is this way. So, basically we have a continuous space it is a position x 1 and it has moved to x 3 via a transition from x 2 to x 3 and these are uh, at times t 1, t 2, t 3. So, we say t is increasing this way t 3 is more than t 1. We can uh, there is no harm in writing, but it should not be misunderstood that t is only a parameter it is not a coordinate representation of the point. Let us see how do we write chapman kolmogorov equation for this problem. There are very rigorous derivations, but let us use a physical way of arriving at it. First thing is we have to merely note here that the the mass probabilities which we introduced in the context of discrete state spaces probabilities become probability densities here. Probabilities they replace or they move over to probability densities. What do we mean is that now we introduce the concept of a transition probability density p x d x is the transition probability transition probability between x and d between x and x plus d x. So, probability density p x is the transition probability density, but the physical meaning of probability comes by multiplying by the element. We can formulate the continuous space and time transition problem as follows using the correct notation for transition probability density in the form p x 3 from x 1 in a time t. With this the probability of transition to a point x 3 within an interval d x 3 that is the probability can be written now as p x 3 from a point x 1 in a time interval t. So, into d x 3 is the actual probability of transition from x 1 to a point in the neighborhood of x 3. This can be written as being equal to the probability. So, probability that the particle transited to the neighborhood of a point x 2 from the starting point x 1 in some time tau. So, this will be the probability and then in the remaining time t minus tau it transited to the point x 3 from x 2 
in the time t minus tau and this transition occurred between x 3 and x 3 plus d x 3 and hence d x 3 has to be multiplied. Since x 2 is an arbitrary point, it would include an integration over all all accessible x 2. Now, we can easily see that the d x 3 terms cancel each other. This equation can be written in a, in a neater form by replacing t minus tau with the t itself that is t instead of t minus tau. Then actually we will have p x 3 from x 1 in a time t plus tau. So, the older t will become now the new t plus tau, this will be sum over all x 2 and the product of transition probabilities p x 3 from an arbitrary point x 2 in a time t and 2 x 2 from x 1 in a time tau over all accessible x 2 points. This is the Chapman Kolmogorov equation. It is a very interesting equation because one may note that the tau here is an arbitrary parameter. Any value of tau is allowed. Hence, this forms a constraint equation for the transition probabilities. The constraint ensures that the transition probabilities occur in specific forms and one cannot have some arbitrary function for transition probabilities. So, we basically use the same concept that to have moved to x 3 from x 1, it could have passed through any of values, these are all x 2 points, x 2 prime, x 2 double prime. So, it could have passed through any of uh, the points. So, only the time of course, this has to continuously uh, change. So, it starts at any time t to have transited to point x 3 after a lapse of time t plus tau goes in two steps. It was in at time t it transited from x 1 to x 2 and then in the another time tau it transited from x 2 to x 3 for all x 2. So, it is intuitive, but made possible again by the Markov and approximation that this trans, that the transition probabilities depended only on the previous states and not on the history of the paths. So, this is the chapman kolmogorov relationship for continuous space time variable. This complements the equation for discrete spaces. With this, we uh, formal, we formally introduced ourselves to the uh, subject of Markov processes. We will understand more of this as we go along and we from now on, we take up some very, very important family of random work, uh, important family of stochastic processes such as random work problems and then explore how to solve these equations. Thank you.